Imagine a hub world where you start with part one and there's these kind of walls here. But after you visit part one and you come back, part two opens, then three, then four, then five, and then six. And these walls will fall if you've been to the previous part. Now, how can we do that in a hub world when it's nearly impossible to track statistics between worlds? What I would do is make sure that these are unlisted worlds. So the only way to get to those worlds is via your hub. To do that, you go to your publishing section, scroll down, you'll see that you can set discoverable to be no. And when you cannot discover the world, it can still be implemented into your worlds as a door, but then it won't be found. So that way you have to go through the hub world. So that's step one is make sure they're not discoverable. Now, if you want to make them discoverable, what I'd recommend doing is adding a podium right here where a player could manually say, I have been there and just check it off. And when they do that, we could then open the next door. We're not gonna be showing how to do that in this video, but if that's something you're interested in us doing, just ask. To get us started, I created this hexagon shape with walls that kind of represent like a maze-like feeling. It is up to you how you design this. The most important part of how this method works is these walls here. These are dividing walls that unlock a section of the world where you'd have a door to the next part. If we head to our settings tab and then we go to player variables, we're gonna create a new player variable called unlocked. Now a player variable is a number variable. So now that we've created the player variable unlocked, it starts as zero for everybody. And because it starts as zero for everybody, we know that this part one will always be unlocked. So I just deleted this wall because it's always gonna be open. Now part two, the player persistent variable needs to be one or greater. Now for simplicity's sake, we're actually gonna use the number two just so it makes a little bit more sense. So what that means is when the player exits via this door, we need to set their persistent variable to be two. And then this wall will say when player enters world, if player persistent variable is two or greater, then move wall below the ground. If you head to your build tab, let's pull out a script block. And from our script block, we're gonna go ahead and call this wall because this is the script that runs on the wall. And then if we go to our variables tab, under variables, we're gonna create a new number variable called I am part. And this allows you to set which part you are. So we're gonna start with a default of two because this is for part two first. And so when world is started, what we wanna do is save the origin position. So if we go to our variables tab, we're gonna create a new vector variable, and this is gonna be called origin position. Now, the reason we're saving an origin position is to make sure this wall only moves by 10 below the ground. So by setting origin position, we go to our values tab to grab the set two, and then we go to our operators tab, scroll down four times, and you're gonna find position of object, which we'll drag into the value section. And then on the values tab again, you'll see self. And so now we've saved the origin position vector as the position of self. The next thing we're gonna do is go to the events tab, and under events, we're gonna grab when world is entered by player. So we've got when player enters world. And what we wanna do when the player enters the world is run an if statement. So we're gonna grab the if statement from the top of the events tab. And we're checking to see on the operators tab, we can scroll to the top and you're gonna find greater than or equal to. And so what we wanna know is if we go to the values tab, we can get the player's persistent variable. So we're gonna drop that into the A slot. We're gonna grab player and drop that into the player section here. And we're gonna click change me to select the unlocked player persistent variable. So now we've gotten what they've unlocked. Now this starts as at a default of zero. So right now it's not gonna be true, but we wanna know what B is. B is that variable we set, I am part two. Now the reason we created this as a variable and didn't just use a values tab number input is because now on every single wall we can use the same script and type in I am part three. I'll show you how that works in just a second. So now that we know if the player's persistent variable unlocked is greater than or equal to two, what we wanna do is move to. So we go to the motion tab, we're gonna grab instant motion because we don't want this to move over time. And we're gonna move to remove this, so grab and delete by pulling down on your joystick. Go to the operators tab and grab the plus symbol. 
and then we're going to grab that origin position and you can grab it from either your variables tab over here or if you grab it from here you can actually just joystick to the right to duplicate and then you want to let go far enough away that it doesn't accidentally misplace it. So we're going to move to that origin position and then we're going to move down by 10. So if we go to our values tab we're going to go grab the vector input and we're going to set this vector to be 0, negative 10, 0. And we're going to do that on self because this is moving the wall down. Now that this is done, that is all we need to do in this script. So we're going to close out of the script. And now that we've closed out of the script, we're going to go over to our wall. Opening up the wall, we can go and attach script wall. And remember how I mentioned you can set the part right here. You can see I am part number two. Now this is part two, so we're good. So we can close out of that. We can go to the next part. We can attach the same script wall and we can set this one to be part number three. And we're going to do that for all six of these. These parts two through six now set up correctly. What we need to do is now track when the player exits the world from part one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a trigger that goes around this door. And if the player exits the world while inside of that trigger, then we're gonna set their player persistent variable to be that of the next, so part two. So let's go ahead and go create another script block. So we're gonna pull this out and we're gonna go ahead and call this door trig. Okay, so now we've got door trigger set up. We don't need to know when world is started. For our door trigger, we're gonna start by creating a new list variable. And if you haven't worked with a list, it might seem daunting, but trust me, you're gonna be just fine. So when we create a list, we're gonna go and select player IDs. So we've created a new list of player IDs and we're just gonna call this plids. Now what this plids value is gonna be tracking is which players are inside of the trigger. This is important so we can have multiple players all exit the same door at the same time. So now when we go to our events tab, we're gonna go ahead and grab when trigger is entered by player. We're also gonna grab when trigger is exited by player. And so when the trigger is entered by a player, we want to add them to the list. And when they exit, we wanna remove them to the, from the list. So we go to our operators tab, scroll down to the very bottom, and you're gonna see add to list and you're also going to see remove item at index from list. Now the way remove item at index from list works is you need to get the index of the item from the list first. So we drop that into the number slot. And so then we're gonna to go to the trigger enter and on trigger enter, we grab the player value, drag that into the value tab of the add value to list. And then we go to our variables tab and grab plids. So that way we're adding the player ID to the plids list. Now here, we need to take that same player and we need to get the index of them in that list. Now what an index is, it's a number because when a player is added, they are put into a position. So that's zero, one, two, three, and so on. And so we need to figure out where is that player in this list first and foremost, so that way we can remove them at that position from the list. So then we go and grab the plids list and we drag that into the list section here and into the list section here. So as you'll see, when we remove the item at the index, meaning the number in the list, we first find out where is that player in the list, then we can remove them. Now that this list is keeping a tally of who has entered and who has exited, we then need to create a new event, which is when player exits the world. So when the player exits the world, what we wanna do is find out if the player is in the list. We're gonna go through this very clearly step-by-step, step, but the first thing I wanted to note is that I was using debug prints so that I could figure out a way to know if the player was inside of the trigger. Because as of right now, there's no way to say, is player in trigger, is player in list? There's no true or false statement for that. And so what I did is I debug printed the index of the player in the player ID list. I also ran an if statement to say, if the player's value in that index is greater than or equal to zero, then debug print in me. And so what you'll see here on the debug panel is when the player's inside of the trigger, their value is zero, because I was the very first player, so I'm in index zero. And we got the in me, so the if statement did go off. And then when I wasn't in the trigger, I got a negative one result and it didn't go off. So this is really important to note because it means that we can effectively know when the player is in the list. And because we can know when the player is in the list, we can now set their player persistent variable. But let's go ahead and start from the beginning so you can see exactly how we did this. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab an if statement from the top of the events tab. We're then gonna go to the operators tab, scroll to the very top, and you're gonna grab the greater than or equal to symbol. And we're going to go to our values tab. We're gonna grab the number input and we're gonna put that in the B section. So we're finding out if we're greater than or equal to zero. And if we go back to our operators tab, scroll all the way to the bottom, we're gonna use that index of item in list. So you'll remember that from before because this is the number that the player ID is inside of the list. So then we can grab our player value, drop that at item, 
go to our, our variables tab, grab plids, and put that in the list section. And now we're finding out if the player is in the list because we know that if the player is not in the list, it returns a negative one value. So this is great. When the player exits the world and they are inside of the trigger, what we wanna do is we wanna say new variable, what number is being unlocked? I unlock, and so this is going to allow us to unlock say part two. And so since we know by default we wanna unlock part two, we'll type in the number two. We then go to our values tab and we go and grab the, from the top, set player persistent var two. Make sure this is an indented because if it's all the way to the left, this bar, it's not gonna work. So we need to move it just slightly to the right. And now that it's indented, we can set the unlocked variable to be not number zero. We wanna go to our variables tab and grab that I unlock variable, put that in the value section and then grab our player down. And now we've set that player's persistent variable to be I unlock number two. So this way, when they enter the world again, so when they come back from part one, part two will open up. So let's go try this out. So we're gonna close out of this. We're going to come in here as a player by pressing up on our joystick. And now we're gonna walk into our trigger. And now in, when you're in build mode, when you exit the world by going into build, this counts as exiting the world. So now that I've exited the world, if I come back into play, you'll see part two unlocked. Look at that, it worked immediately. That is amazing, I'm so proud. Um, there is one caveat that you should be aware of. When the player is inside of this trigger, and I apologize, I didn't show setting up this trigger. This is just a regular trigger. It triggers on players and we've attached the script door trigger. I'll show you how we do that again when we get to part two. The caveat here is if the player is inside of this large trigger and they exit not to part one, but say they go to just any other world, they're still going to unlock part two. So you could get around this by making this a really small trigger right in front of the visit world, but I made this bigger so that if multiple players are in here and they're all exiting this world, they can be kind of gathered around and still get the value. So how do we create this trigger? Well, you're gonna go to your build menu. You're gonna go pull out a trigger. And since we're gonna make it relatively big, we're gonna scale it like that. And then we're going to shorten it down, grab our snap tool. And then I'm using this orange snap tool up here to snap it into the center of the text object. And I am pretty happy with the way that worked. I'm opening the properties panel for our trigger by pressing forward on the joystick, attaching the script door trigger. And remember, this is now part two. So part two unlocks number three. So we'll go change this out with number three. And then from here, the easiest way to duplicate this is grab your duplicate tool, put your hand inside of this trigger and grab on the orange snap point and that will duplicate the trigger and we can snap it right back in here using the green snap point on the text. And then we open up the properties panel and we can set this to number four. And we'll continue doing this all the way through six. In this example world, we only have six doors. So stopping on part five works because you don't need a value larger than six and part five gives you access to part six. But this method works for any number of doors. You could have 20 doors or even more. I do recommend not putting the doors too close together as it can create a lot of lag. But now that this is set up, this will work. So now that I've unlocked part two, I'll come in as a player and we will walk into the part two trigger. I'm gonna stand right next to the visit world. So you'd imagine I'd clicked on this, my body left, that caused the exit world event to go off. And then inside of that world, you'll wanna have a door linking back to this hub world. So that way they come back here as soon as they reach the end of that. Now it does mean that they could stop on part two, like they finish part two, they come back another day. When they come back another day, it unlocks part three. So here we can see part three is unlocked and I still have these closed off. Also keep in mind that if someone else shows up while you're in here and they've already unlocked all of them, then all the doors are gonna be open. And while that could be problematic, I kind of like it because it means you could have a tour guide taking you to part three rather than part two and so on. So if you really wanted this to be per player, what you could do is when world is started, listen to events from an object, which would be a variable trigger. And when that trigger is entered by a player, we would get a trigger enter event. And during the trigger enter event, that's when we'd run this if statement. And if that value was true, we'd lower the wall. And when the player exits the trigger, the wall goes right back up to origin position. So rather than moving to origin position plus negative 10, we'd actually just move straight to origin position. This is an amazingly simple but effective way to create a series of games that can be played. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask, and I cannot wait to see how you all use this. See you in the next one. Bye.